we're going to do a brief overview of the ZCAT. <clears throat> now the ZCAT is the world's first truly portable direct computer controlled coordinate measure machine. I have it sitting on my desk here. You can kind of see as I pan the camera up and down. Uh, the ZCAT weighs about 30 pounds and in this case it can sit right on this fixture place that plate that we have. We have a complete modular fixture system available. Now the ZCAT has four axes of measuring. There's a rotary encoder in the base so it rotates 360 degrees. So I can have parts mounted all the way around the ZCAT. I have a rotary encoder in my probe and that rotates 360 degrees. That's a standard off-the-shelf Renishaw TP20 touch probe. But what's not standard is that it rotates 360 degrees. The, um, we don't need that star configuration that the typical TP20 would have because the horizontal probe can rotate. We have a linear scale on the Z-axis, a linear scale on the cross-axis. So there's four axes of measuring in the Z-cat. So if I'm going to start measuring a part with the Z-cat, in this case I have it on the modular fixture system, I can, I can put our little one of our plates in here. And again, they're magnetic, so we can get them or, oriented properly. In this case, I'll put my part in place of it. Now, I'm, because it's portable, I can put the Z-cat anywhere. I can have it sitting on my desk like I do here. I could have it on a surface plate, or I could have it anywhere on the shop floor or anywhere I'd like to take it. I actually check mine as luggage in the airplanes all the time. So now that I have my part oriented, I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize my screen a little bit here, my, my camera, and bring up the computer screen. Now what, I, what I'm showing here with the, um, on the, the monitor now is what we call MK4 or Fowler Fusion software. And um, it is, uh, once it's booted up and connected to the ZCAT, you can see as I move the ZCAT around, my digital readout will now move accordingly. It's going to use the active probe. In this case, I have vertical probe one chosen as my active probe. Um, I do have a drop down window that will allow me to um, show whatever probes I have available. We're going to stick with vertical probe one right now. Um, and like I say, we're running the, the uh, Mark IV Fowler Fusion software. Um, if I wanted to start writing a program for this part, um, I can actually go into our settings in this case and turn on what we call feature predict because it will predict certain features. So I'm going to turn that on real quick. And with my vertical probe, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to measure a plane on the top of this part. If I measure at least four points, it will give me a plane on my software, as you can see. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let me just uh, kind of get this thing oriented so everybody can see it right. Um, move my camera a little bit. And, uh, and then I'm going to continue measuring. So maybe I measure a point on the fr or a line on the front of this part. We're actually writing a program as we measure. You'll notice I measured a line and it, and it d predicted it was a line. That's unit two is a line. I'm going to go here and go to a diameter and measure a diameter and it will predict that that's a diameter. And I'm going to go ahead and tell it that that is a reference. And now you can see on my screen it's drawn a plane, it's drawn a line, it's drawn a diameter and made that a reference. I'm going to go ahead and measure a couple other features here. Now I'm doing this manually obviously. This is what we call teach and repeat. So I'm teaching it what I want to measure and it's repeat, it will repeat it later. But you see, as I measure these features, it is drawing them on my screen. So now I've got the results. Let's go ahead and pull out one of these diameters now just to, to see what we have. So I'm gonna, this happens to be metric. So let me go ahead and switch it over to metric. And you see it measured this feature as 64.9763 and that's millimeters obviously and I did that manually under uh, it, you know just by hand so if I hit play now I wanted to demonstrate how the difference between measuring manually and measuring under DCC will be so now it's the ZCAT's going and it's measuring the part in this case it's measuring the plane it's duplicating what I did except 
it's going to vector perfectly to the surface, which is something that I could not do by hand. Um, by hand, I'm going to go at a different speed every time, a different angle every time, a different vector. Uh, but the ZCAT is programmed to measure every probe hit at a constant speed. In this case, I think it's at five millimeters per second, and it's going to vector perfectly perpendicular to the measurement surface. So it's measuring the diameters. It will also update any diameters I pulled out on the screen. In this case, I did only pulled out that one large diameter, and it will update that automatically, and you'll see it updated that at uh, 65.022 in a six micron roundness. If I look back at what I measured the first time, it was 64.9763. So quite a bit of difference. Uh, and that's just a good demonstration of the difference between manual and direct computer control. Now, if I double click on any one of these features, I can pull out the results. Um, obviously, those are diameters. If I want to know the distance between two features, I can click once on each, pull it out drop it and that's the distance between these two features. If I wanted to get true position, I could double click on this large diameter and then right click and say position Cartesian and it will give me the true position of that, that quick, that easy. Um, so what I've done so far is a, a few features by hand and if I wanted to continue measuring this, this part with my probe, I can come in and continue with the teach and repeat. I can measure around this outside diameter. You'll see it predicted that that was a diameter. I can actually go into my CNC portion of this page and tell I really want to take six points and I want it to be exact, all points to be exactly six millimeter above the plane. And I can hit make and now you'll see the ZCAT will go into that same diameter and measure that outside diameter with six points equally distance around it exactly six millimeters above my reference plane. So that quick, that easy, I can write a program to measure multiple features. In this case, I'll confirm that, we'll pull this diameter out and there's the diameter of that. Now, obviously I could go into this large circle that I only took four points in. I could go into CNC here, change that to eight points as well. Program in my penetration from the plane my reference plane and it will edit that so that all my points are now six millimeters below that reference plane. So we can fine tune our program. Now I've always I've already measured quite a few features but I can go in here and let's let's choose some other features. Let's say I want to measure a cylinder. Now it will not predict a cylinder so I have to tell it ahead of time I'm going to measure a cylinder. So I'm going to go into this cylinder right here and now start taking random points inside the cylinder. And you can see there's my cylinder. And it's now going to start showing in my in my uh, XZ window, in my YZ window, in uh, you know more in 3D. Now I can hit play. Now if I want to just run that part under direct computer control, I don't have to accept the results done manually. The whole idea of this is having to take the operator error out of it. So by running it under DCC, we definitely do that because it's going to it's going to take probe hits at the same speed every time and you can see I now have that that cylinder and I have what I have is here is is a cylindrosity of of about 20 millimeter if I double click on that cylinder I can bring it down here and there's the diameter and there's a cylindrosity or cylindricity of that feature so we also can do other features like a, a sphere I can come in here tell it I'm going to measure a sphere come into my little cup spear I have on my part. I can take a few random points and there's the sphere. I can also go into a cone and tell it I'm going to measure a cone off of a reference axis off of a measured feature. In this case, plane number one. I'll come down here and start taking random points in my cone. That quick, that easy, I can write a program to do this. Now, if I were to look at my inspection window and bring up my program tree, you can see all of the features that I have in my program so far. There's nine features. All of them are measured features. Uh, we also have the ability to construct features. I could go in and tell it I want to 
measure a line between this small circle and the large circle and it will default to a center line. I'll confirm that and check it and we'll do one more line from this circle to the large circle. Again, confirm center line, finish. And now I've got constructed lines. I can now measure an angle from those constructed lines or what should be about 60 degree angle, which it is. So now my program has a few features in here. Um, if I wanted to pull out more dimensions, obviously I, I could do that. Maybe I want to get, I, I want to set uh, this plane as datum A. I can go in here and set that as datum A. I can then even label it on my screen as datum A. Label it like this. Maybe this line is datum B. Come over here, datum B. And maybe this is datum C. Double click, right click. We have datum. My drop down window allows me to pick C. And there I've got that. So now I can have my true position of any one of these features. Right click, position, drop it, add A, B, and C. And now I have that on my part as well. So now my program may or may not be completed, but I could easily go into here and let's say, let's run this program and you'll see the Zcat will run the program, bring up the camera so you can see it's measuring each feature individually. Measure them in the same order that I did. I can obviously change that order if I want to. Um, but you can see the Zcat is going in and measuring using, in this case, the vertical probe. And it will also change in the screen. Now on the screen, it's gonna give us a highlight in green. The feature it's measuring, the red dot, is, is obviously the, uh, the probe. As it measures the part, it will update the results. In this case, we've measured the diameter, we've measured the true position. Um, it's doing every feature in the order that we did, and it will update the results. If it is in spec, it will give you a green arrow. If it's not in spec, it will give you a red arrow. Now, we haven't even put in any specs or tolerances yet. Um, it's assuming those based on the settings of our software. So once I pulled out the dimension, in this case, the large diameter, if I look at it, you'll see it may, it's assuming the nominal is 65 millimeter based on what we measured. Um, and then it puts in the tolerances, plus or minus whatever uh, we normally have, and it will fill those in and check it if they're within tolerance. Now we can edit the tolerance, we can edit the nominal, we can edit the identifier, we can put in bubble numbers. You can see here it's measured this part three times. The first time we measured it manually, we got 6479763. Uh, we've done it twice now under DCC and it's 65022, 65023. That's, that's one micron difference between those readings uh, sitting on my wooden desk. So all of the things are updated here. Um, we can now pull out other dimensions. Maybe we want to get that cone. We want to get this sphere. Um, all of these things are available once we've measured. So that's a quick synopsis of measuring with the Zcat, writing a program with the Zcat and running that program with the Zcat. Once that program is written, obviously reporting is gonna be a, a, a key thing to do. So if I bring up my report tab, I can grab graphic details, I can have tabulator dimensions, or I can run um, multi-components. And if I hit the report window, it will now bring up these reports. And let me move my camera out of the way a little bit to look at my reports. So here's a here's the uh, graphic detail of my XY window. Um, it, again, it's going to show me whatever the results of the last part was and graphically give us the, the results in green or red. 
if it's pass or fail. Same thing in tabulator dimensions. Here's a, a, a report in an Excel format that gives us the individual results of every feature we pulled out on the screen. And if it passed or if it's failed, it will give us a green pass or red fail. If we've run the part more than one time, we can do a multi-component report. And then every time we've run it, it will give us the results for that individual feature. So you can see we, we've, some of them we've run three times, some of them we've only run twice, some we've only run once, but it'll, it'll archive the data and everything is here in a pass or fail. So very quickly, very easily, we can archive the data, we can monitor the results and we can check the results. So that's how quick and easy we can write a program and run a program on the Zcat. Um, I hope this has been informative. Um, if you'd like a more in-depth demonstration, uh, be sure to get a hold of us. You can contact me directly at jeffp at zcat.com, J-E-F-F-P at zcat.com. Uh, thank you and have a great day. Thank you, my